Hello, I'm Xinhui, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Northern Virginia. Today, I'm going to walk you through the steps to troubleshoot the issue when you can copy an object between two Amazon Simple Storage Service buckets. Let's get started. In this scenario, I am KC Vet user, an AWS Identity and Access Management user, trying to copy an CSV file from a source bucket named bucket 1234source to a destination bucket named bucket 1234 destination. These two buckets are under the same AWS account. But when I log into the AWS CLI with the credentials of user, kcvid user, to run the copy command, I get the following access denied error message. The first step to troubleshoot this access deny issue is to make sure that the user that we are using has the permissions to access both the source bucket and destination bucket. To check the IAM user permission, follow these steps. Log into the AWS Management Console as the admin user or as a user with the IAM permissions to access AWS IAM Console, and then navigate to IAM Console. Go to the Users page and select the user we are using. Under the Permissions tab, notice all the IAM policies that are attached to this user. Here we can see that KCVid user has the permissions to both list buckets and get objects from the source bucket. They also have the permissions to list buckets in the destination and put objects into the destination bucket. These are the minimum required permissions for copying an object between S3 buckets. The IAM permission for the KCVid user should not be an issue here. Additionally, we must check the bucket policy for these two S3 buckets. Here are the steps to check the bucket policy. Log into the AWS Management Console and then navigate to S3 Console. Select the bucket that we want to check. Go to the Permissions tab. View the bucket policy that appears. We can see that there's no deny statement that applies to KCVid user. Let's make sure that the same permissions are set for the destination bucket. Notice that there's no deny statement here either. We can confirm that there is no deny statement in the bucket policy for either S3 bucket. That's preventing KCVid user from accessing the bucket. The user KCVid user should have the permissions to get the object from the source bucket and put it into the destination bucket. So now let's take a look at the permission of the CSV file. Because S3 allows other AWS accounts to put objects and manage access using access control lists, ACLs, we must check the ownership of the object and confirm that this object allows the user, KCVid user, to access it. Note that because the majority of use cases in Amazon S3 no longer require the use of ACL. It's a best practice to disable ACLs, except in unusual circumstances where you must control access for each object individually. To check the object permission, follow these steps. Return to the S3 console, select the source bucket, and then select the file. Go to the Permissions tab. View the ACL details that appear. We can see that the canonical ID under ACLs for the object owner contains 
your AWS account. This means that this object is owned by your account. If the object that you can copy between buckets is owned by another account, then the object owner can do one of the following. The object owner can grant the bucket owner full control of the object. This grants the bucket owner permissions to access the object, and the bucket owner can then delegate list permissions to principals within the bucket owner's account. The object owner can keep ownership of the object, but they must change the ACL to the settings that you need for your use case. If an AWS account other than the bucket owner or object owner requires access to the object, then the object owner must grant those permissions through an ACL. The bucket owner can disable ACLs on a bucket. This makes the bucket owner the object owner for all objects in the bucket. They can then grant permissions to other AWS account through the bucket policy. Before disabling ACLs on your bucket, be sure that you understand how the ACLs are being used currently. Also be sure that you have granted the appropriate permissions through the bucket policy to make sure that current access is not disrupted. In our case here, the object ownership won't cause an issue. Is there anything else to consider? Know that both of the S3 buckets have AWS key management service encryption enabled. This means that all the objects in the bucket will be encrypted automatically with specified AWS KMS keys. So we must make sure that KCVID user is allowed to use the AWS KMS keys used by both S3 buckets. To check the KMS key policy, follow the steps. Return to the S3 console, select the bucket. Let's check the source bucket first, but don't worry, we will eventually check both of them. Go to the properties tab. Under default encryption, find the KMS key that is used to encrypt objects in this S3 bucket. Go to the KMS key page by choosing the KMS key hyperlink. Under the key policy, view the list of key users. It looks like KCVID user isn't added as a key user for the source KMS key. Let's add KCVID user as a key user. Now the user has permissions to access the KMS key in the source bucket. Let's do the same for destination bucket. And again, we can see that KCVID user is a key user for the destination KMS key. After we have KCVID user as key user for both the source KMS key and then destination KMS key, let's try the copy command again. Know that in addition to checking the IAM user permission, the bucket policy, the object ownership, and the KMS key permission. You must also be aware of the following limits. Cross-region request issues with VPC endpoints for S3 is not supported. If the source object is archived in Amazon S3 Glacier Flexible Retrieval or Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive, you must first restore a temporary copy before you can copy the object to another bucket. If the source or destination bucket has requester pays enabled and you are accessing the bucket from another account, check your request. Make sure that your request includes the X Amazon request payer header 
with the correct value. If you are using AWS organizations, then check the service control policies to be sure that access to S3 is allowed. So now you know how to troubleshoot the issue when you can copy an object between two S3 buckets. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.